got a heck of a show in store for you tonight, and I'm very excited for you to see it all unfold before your very eyes. Really Please welcome Dr. June Ross Mitchell and Lily, the young subject of the book, Conversations with the Devil. <laughs> Good to see you again, Jack. Lily, return to me. This isn't about ratings anymore. No one's going anywhere. How could you let it happen, Jack? How could you let it happen? At the beginning of the movie, we see a man named Jack Delroy, who hosts a successful variety late-night talk show called Night Owls that competes for ratings with The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Through his television connections, Jack Delroy makes regular visits to The Grove, an elite California summer camp for rich and powerful men. In 1976, Jack's world was turned upside down when his wife Madeline, despite being a non-smoker, was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. In October, she made a special appearance on his show, leading to the highest rated episode in the history of Night Owls, though it still fell a point short of Carson's ratings. Two weeks later, Madeline passed away, an event that had a profound impact on Jack and led to a temporary halt in the production of Night Owls. Although Jack eventually returned to the show, it never regained its previous level of success. To recover his ratings, a desperate Jack decided to host a special occultism-themed episode on Halloween night in 1977, broadcast from the show's Manhattan studio. What follows is the recently discovered master tape of what aired that night, along with previously unreleased behind-the-scenes footage. Special guests for the show's episode include psychic Christo, skeptical former magician Carmichael the Conjurer, parapsychologist author June Ross Mitchell, and June's subject Lily. During the broadcast, Christo claims he is hearing the name Peterson. A man from the audience corrects him, saying Peterman. Intrigued, Jack approaches the man, who explains that Peterman was his wife's maiden name. Christo asserts that his wife's spirit is currently in the room with them. However, the man reveals that his wife is very much alive and had run off with his neighbor five years ago. Christo quickly recovers explaining that sometimes the signals he receives can get scrambled due to the studio lights and cameras. He then moves towards two women and asks, who is connected to Edward? One of them responds, saying her little brother's name was Edmund. Christo, slightly off but still confident, asks if Edmund took his own life, to which the girl confirms. Christo conveys a message, stating that Edmund wants her and their mother to know that he is at peace and is sorry for the suffering he has caused. As the audience and Jack applaud Christo's efforts, Jack announces they are about to take a quick break. However, just then, Christo suddenly begins screaming, his demeanor shifting dramatically. He claims that something very intense is happening, and that he is now getting the name Minnie clearly. Jack asks if the name Minnie means anything to anyone present in the studio, but no one in the studio recognizes the name. Christo feels sadness and then specifies that the spirit wants to talk to an unmarried man with a wedding ring. Just then, the lights flicker, causing a stir among the audience, while Christo, regaining some composure, tells them that the spirit of Minnie has left the room. After the commercial break, Jack introduces Carmichael to the stage, and as soon as Carmichael arrives, he begins performing an impressive trick, captivating the audience and earning their admiration. Carmichael expresses his skepticism regarding the paranormal and psychics, firmly believing that there are scientific explanations for everything. He asserts that, until he is presented with undeniable proof, he will persist in exposing these individuals as the frauds he believes them to be. He also offers a $100,000 reward for anyone whose claims can be verified. Jack prompts Carmichael to offer his interpretation of Christo's readings, to which Carmichael responds by asserting that what he witnessed was a skilled performer employing age-old tricks, with roots tracing back to biblical times. He notes that, in his opinion, Christo failed several times before stumbling upon the tenuous connection with Peterson. Jack counters by mentioning the apparent connection Christo made with Edmund's spirit, but Carmichael dismisses it, stating that even a broken clock can be right twice a day. Furious, Christo rises and throws water on Carmichael's face before attempting to storm off the stage. However, Jack intervenes, urging Christo to return, as they have not yet discussed the final reading. Jack suggests that he believes the last reading may have been intended for him. Christo asks Jack who Minnie is, 
to which Jack reveals that Minnie is the nickname he gave to his late wife, Madeleine, and he is the unmarried man wearing a wedding ring. Carmichael, remaining skeptical, issues a challenge, asking if Christo can summon the spirit of Jack's deceased wife and offer a reward of half a million dollars. However, Christo collapses, and suddenly projectile vomits a black liquid onto Carmichael, shocking everyone in the studio. In backstage footage, Christo's condition deteriorates rapidly, and he is hurriedly taken to his dressing room for medical attention. Meanwhile, Carmichael expresses doubts suggesting that Jack may have informed Christo about his wife's nickname to boost the ratings of his show. After the commercial break, Jack informs the audience and viewers that Christo is currently receiving medical attention backstage. He then presents to the audience a book titled Conversation with the Devil by Dr. June Ross Mitchell. Jack proceeds to share with the viewers a clip produced by June's Psy Research Center. In the video, Viewers see a seemingly ordinary house that doubles as the base for the infamous First Church of Abraxas. The church's enigmatic leader, Xandor D. Abo, preaches that Abraxas transcends concepts of good and evil, focusing only on desire and acquisition, while demanding sacrifices. The FBI investigates the cult for alleged crimes, like kidnapping and illegal firearms possession amid chilling allegations of breeding children for human sacrifices. Dabo claims that witnessing these rituals binds one to serve the demon Abraxas. In August 1974, a standoff at the First Church of Abraxas ended tragically, when leader D. Abo instructed followers to set themselves and their building ablaze. Among the ruins, authorities found Lily, a ten-year-old with fragmented memories. It's unclear if her survival was planned by D. Abo or coincidental. Perplexed by her behavior, the FBI consulted June's research center, where Lily and June formed an instant connection, and during their first session together, they managed to make contact. When Lily asks if she is speaking with the demon, Lily begins screaming in a demonic voice. In a commercial break, June shares with Jack that Lily recently entered a fugue state, mentioning his name, suggesting a possible recollection. She advises against invoking the demon on live TV, citing potential dangers. Later, Leo tells Jack that Christo has passed away from internal hemorrhaging on the way to Mount Sinai Hospital. After the break, Jack questions June about the work of parapsychologists. She explains that they study certain psi phenomena that traditional science struggles to comprehend. Over the past three years, she has been combining age regression therapy with a deepening understanding of ancient satanic rituals to unravel the details of Lily's life and understand the nature of the demon within her. Jack then asks if this demon is Abraxas, to which June responds that she believes it's more like one of the minor deities said to serve Abraxas. Lily tells Jack that the demon inside her, whom she calls Mr. Riggles, because he kind of wriggles his way inside her head, and then he wriggles his way out. She explains that June says everyone has a demon inside them, but they can't always control them. Then suddenly strange things start happening in the studio, causing the entire studio to shake. Carmichael gets up and unplugs the speaker cable, claiming it was causing feedback through their PS system. However, Lily insists that it was Mr. Riggles who caused it. Jack asks if Lily means that Mr. Riggles is currently in the studio with them, and if it would be acceptable to invite him on the show. June intervenes, stating that she cannot allow it because summoning requires a carefully controlled environment. However, when Jack and the audience persist, June reluctantly agrees. She specifies that if she is able to conduct the session with the full cooperation of Jack's crew and the audience, then perhaps they can attempt a brief demonstration. During the commercial break, Jack tells June that this is her opportunity to prove people like Carmichael wrong. However, June is visibly upset with him. Gus warns Jack that he's meddling with things he doesn't understand, to which Jack declares that if they manage to conjure Satan, Gus has his express permission to head straight for the exit, and he explains that he's doing all this to save their show. Gus tells Jack that he's aware of what happened with Christo, and pleads with him to stop this before something terrible occurs. After the break, June addresses the viewers, cautioning that if the entity is present tonight, it may manifest itself in various ways, but its entry into their world is only possible through Lily. She urges everyone to remain calm, no matter what they see or hear. June then begins the process, 
and instructs Lily to close her eyes and allow herself to sleep. Soon after, Lily falls asleep, but when June attempts to communicate with Mr. Wiggles, Lily starts exhibiting strange behavior, moving her chair erratically. After a while, in a demonic voice, Lily tells June that she knows who he is. When she raises her head, everyone witnesses that Lily has become possessed. She then turns to the audience and asks who they are. June tries to explain to the entity that they brought him into this world to understand his purpose. However, the entity looks at Jack and remarks that it's good to see him again. Confused, Jack denies being acquainted with the entity, to which the demon claims they have a long history and have met among the tall trees. June asks Lily to return to her, to which the demon asks her to be careful, saying Jack's last wife died an ugly death. It says that Dr. June thinks Jack is very handsome and reveals that June and Jack are sleeping together. Furious, June slaps Lily to bring her back, but suddenly the demon tries to attack her, prompting June to recite a spell showing the demon a charm. But the demon keeps laughing and repeating June's words, and then it looks at Jack asking how could he let it happen. Then strange things start happening in the studio, and Lily levitates in her chair for a moment before coming back down. June apologizes to her for putting her in that position, and Jack asks the viewers if they have ever seen anything like that. Skeptical Carmichael wishes to point out tricks he believes June used, to which Jack assures him he'll get his chance to speak. During the commercial break, Gus informs Carmichael that Christo has passed away. Shortly after, Leo informs Jack that three members of the crew have walked off. Additionally, the Communications Commission has called for an emergency meeting at 7, marking it as the biggest TV event since the moon landing. As they return live, Carmichael asserts that there is no demon lurking inside Lily, but rather she has been placed in a hypnotic state and manipulated by the doctor to perform her part. Jack challenges Carmichael, asking how he will explain the physical changes and voice alteration. He accuses Carmichael of being a self-righteous, cold-hearted curmudgeon, attempting to avoid parting with half a million bucks. Carmichael expresses his desire to prove his theory definitively and selects Gus as a volunteer. He produces a watch and instructs everyone to focus on it. After a moment, Carmichael clicks a button and prompts Gus to share his fear of worms, to which Gus responds with disdain. Carmichael insists that Gus is now deeply hypnotized, although Gus denies realizing it. Undeterred, Carmichael asserts his authority, commanding Gus to obey him with a snap of his fingers. Gus squirms uncomfortably, complaining of itching and discomfort as Carmichael's command takes effect. Carmichael then suggests to Gus that his neck is bleeding, prompting Gus to check it. To his horror, Gus discovers what appear to be worms emerging from his neck. Panicked, Gus tears at his stomach, claiming to feel worms crawling inside him. The audience and Jack react with astonishment at the unexpected turn of events, and when Carmichael attempts to snap Gus out of the hypnotism, he is unsuccessful. Lily laughs and asks why Gus is acting so silly, and then a huge worm bursts out of Gus's eye. Carmichael successfully snaps everyone out of the hypnotism, and Gus doesn't remember anything. Shocked, Jack asks Carmichael what just happened, to which he explains that he did the exact same thing June did, just with a tad more imagination. Jack asks Leo if he can rewind the videotape to replay the last segment, and the playback proves that Carmichael's demonstration was merely a hallucination experienced by everyone in the studio. Lily suggests that if Carmichael believes they were playing a trick on everyone, then perhaps they should review that part of the show as well. They review the footage, and to their shock, the supernatural phenomena that occurred during June's Conjuring appear unaltered in the recorded playback. Jack instructs the team to rewind the footage and play it slowly, frame by frame, and he is horrified when he notices an apparition of a spiritual Madeline standing behind him in the footage. Carmichael angrily accuses Jack of orchestrating the events as an elaborate hoax, and during this, Lily becomes possessed again, and electricity starts running all over her body. As Jack touches her, the lights in the studio begin flickering, and then it goes dark there, and soon after, a bolt of lighting from the ceiling above connects to her left hand as a bolt from the nearby monitor connects to her right. Lily screams before her head splits open and begins to glow with a bright light. Using her telekinetic powers, 
she swiftly kills Gus by twisting his head backward, lifts June into the air, before throwing Jack away, and then cuts June's neck open with her pendant necklace, and incinerates Carmichael from the inside out. Jack tries to flee but finds himself suddenly transported to a nightmarish version of the show. He then discovers himself on a stage, unwittingly becoming part of an act, and subsequently finds himself back on his own on his own on his own on his own on show, where a guest presents him with a huge worm. Suddenly, Minnie appears, saying the words she spoke on her last show with Jack. It is now revealed that Jack had earlier encountered the demon who possessed Lily during the ceremony of the grove, which resulted in his show gaining sudden fame and he was indirectly responsible for Madeline contracting cancer. As a price of his success, Madeline's spirit confronts Jack, pleading with him to end her suffering as the cancer inflicts unbearable pain. Using the ritualistic dagger from Lily's old cult, he plunges it into Madeline's body. Suddenly, the scene transitions to the now empty studio, revealing a horrified Jack who has unknowingly stabbed Lily. Jack stands over the lifeless bodies of his guests as the sound of approaching police sirens grows louder in the distance. And the movie ends here. Thanks for facing the frights with us. If you survived this video, drop a like, summon that subscribe button, and brace yourself for more horror. Until next time, stay spooked.